So Runway Gen 4 is here and with it, it actually brings a suite of different innovations that makes this one actually useful. And I do think that we just reached probably this week, the tipping point in terms of AI creativity, because whilst yes, we've seen products like Sora and other video models, this one actually has some key, key features that aren't just video generation, but some ones that you actually need for filmmaking that set it above the rest. So in this video, I'll dive deep into what makes this specific runway model Gen 4 actually so much better than the competition and why this model isn't actually just hype, but rather a fundamental tool that many creatives are going to start using. I mean, taking a look at some of the footage here, you can see that a lot of these scenes are completely beautiful and, and there seems to be really consistent scenes going on here and I'm not seeing so much deformation that I'm used to seeing in a variety of other clips. So let's dive into what makes this really impressive because honestly, I think a lot of people are going to miss out on why this model truly changed the game. So one of the things that really, really changed the game for me and looking at this as someone who previously, I wouldn't say I worked in film, but I definitely made a few short films before. Consistent characters are a key, key gripe in terms of being able to actually make something worthwhile. And Runway Gen 4 actually introduces consistent characters when you're trying to create a video. Now, if you aren't familiar with why this is such a big thing, it's because if you are creating a short film, a movie, something like an advert, you need to be able to have a consistent character that the viewers can consistently recognize. And this is something that previously we weren't able to get. One of the initial drawbacks from Sora was the fact that when the artists were working with it, they had to prompt the model several times. I think they had to prompt the model around 20 times in order to get a usable shot simply because every single time they prompted the model, it was a different person every single time. So they were basically just using the generative model, to see if they can get to a similar person every single time. And that was something that was, you know, frustrating to them. So think about that. Once again, there's a huge time save there. And, you know, this is the foundation of storytelling. In any story, we always follow what the character is doing. It isn't just, you know, some cool scenes that are just animated to look really nice. It's always following a, you know, character going on that journey, finding out what they're up to, you know, their limitations, whatever they explore, the flashbacks, the future versions. I mean, it's all part of the story editing process. And this is something that is really, really important. Now, not only that, it's actually going to save time. You can reprompt the same character with highly specific descriptions. You can use image anchors for star references. I mean, this is going to be something that is game changer because now you're probably going to see people actually using this in their workflows because now you can generate something that people could actually use. Beforehand, it was maybe for the off scene in a creative film, but now this is something that I think a lot more agencies and individuals are going to start experimenting with. And it's the first model ever that we're putting out that achieves world consistency. That means that you can create consistent worlds with consistent environments, objects, locations, and characters. When you can do that, you can start to tell longer form narrative content with actual continuity. You can generate the same characters, the same objects, the same locations across different scenarios. So you can block your scenes and tell your stories with intention over and over and over again. It's been very fun to design and develop Gen 4 for the last couple of months and see what the model is really capable of doing. We believe that the best demonstration of Gen 4 as a creative tool is in the stories that can be told using the model. We also put together a series of short films and experiments to showcase what you're capable of doing with Gen 4. Now, not only that, but there is also object consistency. So another thing, like I said before, is not only the character consistency, but object consistency, whether it be a car or a solid object that you need to throw around, this is going to now be consistent in the film. Once again, like I said before, this is something that, you know, we really do need if we want to push the boundaries and having a video generation model that is able to keep that object in all videos the same is actually pretty difficult and I'm surprised they managed to do it. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, they really struggled with as well, like when you're using these models, I know some people just watch the tools, they don't really use them. But one of the things that you'll quickly realize is that without, you know, character consistency and object consistency, things tend to lose that fun element very, very quickly because you realize every time you hit generate, 
everything is just a bit random. So, you know, when people, objects and environments change every single frame, it instantly starts to look fake. You know, humans have a really good ability to be able to tell what is real and what is fake. And if you're seeing an object morph and change subtly in every single new frame, you're going to realize that, you know, it is AI generated. So, you know, a cup turning into a different cup every second or a car changing shapes or colors mid shot, you know, it just destroys the realism. And humans are hardwired to notice those inconsistencies, you know, in live action animation, we expect every single character, every single prop to stay the same unless something actually causes them to change. So if we can't have objects that can't maintain consistency, then, you know, you can't really use that model. So this is something that, you know, once again, is super, super important for the development of this. And this is why I said, a lot of people are going to miss this update. They're going to realize that, well, this is something that, you know, you definitely needed. But like I said before, a lot of people won't miss this because it's not going to break headlines. But underneath, you'll just start to realize that we're getting a lot more interesting videos and a lot of these, you know, consistent characters are starting to look a lot more realism. And you might be thinking, wow, when did we actually have that week or that day when we got consistent characters, object consistency with a model that really understands the world? And with Gen 4, you can actually direct the subject across the scene. So you'll see we give the skunk two marks. So in this case, we wanted the skunk to go first in this side and then return, making it feel like he's looking for something. And you can see that throughout the scene, it's the same character with the same light, with the same mood, with the same condition. <laughs> and here we're introducing the character, the protagonist, right? Yeah, again, like all great animation, you see so much expressiveness in the way that not only the characters are designed with the model, but also moving within these scenes. <laughs> Okay, so what we just saw was a really great example of character consistency, bringing those same characters across different scenes, different lighting conditions, with different motions and actions being directed. But you can also just take objects, objects from the real world. So we have a little toy here, we're going to take a photo of it, yeah. and then you can basically bring that photo of this toy into Gen 4, and then bring it into any environment you want. So um, I'm going to do a kind of little demo here. I'm just going to take a picture of um, this particular object that we have here, again, just from my phone. So you'll see it come here, um, I'll do that. I think mean, what I'll do is I'll take that picture um, and I'll run it through a set of different environments. So now that we have that picture, I'll just drag that into Gen 4 over here as my reference. And, and I'll also use this photo of New York that I took a couple of days ago. And now I'm gonna type the kind of composition that I want. So uh, in this case, I want this wooden toy, uh, maybe leaning or next to the sidewalk of the street in New York City. Now, Gen 4 is combining those references, and there we go. We have four initial images that we can browse and select. I kind of like this one, so it's animated. Uh, maybe I want, the, I want people kind of like coming in front of the toy. And now you can see how we get the motion and the animation that I required, both with the toy and the CD I uh, use as a reference. And of course, you can do this with any location, so we can take the toy um, to perhaps the mountains, we can bury it on the desert. Basically, you can do it with it whatever you want. Now, this arguably might be the biggest change. And I think a lot of people, once again, won't realize this. So what this is, this is AI VFX. And what they're actually calling this is G VFX. So basically, if you don't understand what visual effects is, is this is the after effects on certain scenes that you otherwise would have thought is real. Now, VFX is often so good that you won't realize what you're watching actually has VFX on top of it. You know, as the VFX artists say, you know, good VFX you can't really see. And the thing about VFX though, is that VFX is probably one of the most time consuming things of any, you know, filmmaking scenes that you, that you have to do, you know, in these big Hollywood films, VFX, not only does it take time, it often costs millions of dollars and they're paying these animation studios, you know, millions of dollars. And, you know, they, they, these animation studios, they are essentially paying millions of dollars in server farms to rent out GPUs so that they can render all of the stuff as quickly as possible. So VFX usually, it actually requires, you know, huge teams working frame by frame. And, you know, with AI, complex tasks like rotoscoping, object removal, motion tracking, all of this stuff can now, now be automated. Like what used to be tedious manual labor can be done in minutes or in real time. So instead of, you know, 40 minutes cleaning up a shot, you know, Runway can handle it near instantly. And like as before, one of the biggest things that, you know, these companies are focused on 
is the cost. Maybe you're a agency or a short film studio and you don't want to have to spend, you know, millions of dollars on VFX. You can use a tool like Runway to enhance that production level quality. I'm sure some of you have probably seen a TV show and you've been thinking, wow, the visual effects on that shot is just absolutely awful. And guys, it's not because the VFX artists are bad. It's oftentimes because number one, they may have run out of time because like I said before, it is time consuming because you need to get it to look real. And number two, you know, they may not have enough, you know, budget to be able to pay good enough people so that they can actually get the VFX that looks really realistic. Maybe they're just paying someone really cheaply. And of course, if you're paying someone cheaply and quickly to get it done, it's never going to come out well. So, you know, this is really also, you know, good because if this, you know, is using AI, if you're using a generative model, you can actually quickly test different looks, swap out the environments, adjust the lighting, and you won't have to reshoot, rebuild sets in 3D. And this makes the creative process actually much fun, much faster and more experimental. So if you wanted to go from a sunny place to being on fire, you could do that. So I think, you know, in a few years, this is probably going to be something that is probably, you know, state of the art. I do think in a few years, it will be normal to have AI VFX there. I'm probably going to have a clip of them actually talking about this, but this is definitely one of the biggest things because this is going to disrupt the industry in a way that we've never seen, provided that, you know, you can actually upscale it and get the quality that you need. Because like I've said, this is something that is not only is it very expensive, it is also very, very time consuming. Now, there's also something else, okay? And I think this was, you know, pretty innovative. They allow you to have multiple shot angles. So let's say you wanted a shot of a person, you wanted a side shot, you wanted a shot from above, a bird's eye view. This is really, really important for creating, you know, you know, just dynamic scenes that have different camera angles because you have so many camera angles that you just simply won't pick up on. Like if you're just watching a TV show, you don't realize how many different, you know, dynamic cam camera angles there are. Like, you know, they've got the close up shot. You've got a shot from behind. You've got like an overhead view. You've got a bird's eye view. You've got, you know, just many different shots that just really create a dynamic scene. And now that you can actually do this in runway, this is going to allow a completely different level of creative expression. And of course, with character consistency, I don't think people are going to realize what they're watching as AI oftentimes because it's going to be so, so realistic. Now, one of the things I do just want to really, really get onto is, of course, the physics. So they talk about the fact that, you know, they've managed to upgrade the physics simulation. And I believe them because I remember watching the previous edition of this model and the previous edition of this model. If you actually took a look at some of the fluid simulations, they did look relatively realistic compared to what I've seen from other models. So I don't know what training process they used, what kind of data they used. Maybe they just, you know, trained on a bunch of different fluid simulations. It is quite possible that they did that or fire simulations or, you know, water simulations. It probably did. They probably did do something like that. So they could probably, you know, have the best effects. But this is something that is really important if we're going to have something that looks realistic. And physics is really, really hard. Like, I don't want you guys to underestimate how hard it is to make a model really have the correct physics because it shows us that the model is grounded in reality. And oftentimes we realize that these models are not. Now, I'm not going to dive into all the research papers that talk about, you know, physics and this and that. But there is one paper that I don't think most people have seen that I would like to see more models get benchmarked on. So this is, of course, Physics IQ. And they talk about, do generative video models understand physical principles? And the last time this was tested, you know, state-of-the-art models got around 20%. So I would like to see wh what this model gets on this because basically what they do is they take a video of something real happening in the real world, in the real physical world, and then they put an image and they explain what happens. And then they see if the video models can generate the actual event occurring like it would in real life. And 20% of the time, those previous models do. So I would like to see how this model does perform on this benchmark. Now, if you want to see how this model compares to other models, thanks to Curious Refuge, we get to see how it compares to other video generation models. Luma Ray 2 actually surprisingly looks good here. I haven't had, you know, much success with that. Kling doesn't look that great here, but you know, I think this is just one scenario. So I will have to say that, you know, with this model, 
definitely do test it out yourself. Of course, there's going to be different, you know, scenes and different styles that may be more effective than others. You know, we do see the Gen 4 here compared to the others. It does look the best. But I think that if you're probably using Gen 4, you're definitely going to be some kind of filmmaker because it seems like that is what, you know, it was tailored towards that professional high grade level filmmaking not that kind of wacky crazy style like you know vo cling and all the all, all those kind of you know ai image generators of course i will definitely be testing them all out when it gets rolled out but that's something that i will be looking at now i did want to showcase to you all my favorite clip right here this was something i saw on twitter i'll leave a link to this because this was just super super creative and i don't know why but this just captivated me so i thought i would share this because it just goes to show what you can do when you prompt the AI well. I'm not sure who tweeted this, but I will leave a link to it. But overall, I do think that this is probably going to change things a lot. It definitely was a crazy week in AI. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know what you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.